All right, let's talk about some of the challenges with getting your vehicle smog checked. In this case, we got a 2023 Dodge Challenger Hellcat. I have 3,700 miles on it right now. I uh, just finished putting about 200 miles on it with drive tests. <clears throat> I, I took it in to get it smogged thinking, yeah, it'll just pass smog, like no issue, right? Like all my other vehicles I've ever owned, my wife's car, like I just take it in, smog it, I'm in and out, 10 minutes, boom, easy. I failed. I was like, what do you mean I failed? And he's like, well, you know, two of your readiness monitors are, you know, in the in conclusion, in, uh, incomplete status or the not ready status. So we have uh, the EVAP and the O2 sensor. And I was like, okay, so so what do I have to do about that? And he's like, well, you have to do a drive cycle. You got to drive at least 50 miles and this and that. <clears throat> so I'm pretty familiar with drive cycles. I've had to do that before. Um, for some of my friends' cars, never for cars that I've owned, but with other people's cars, I've done that. Anyway, so <clears throat> let me tell you kind of how you can deal with this. So before you're going to get the car smogged, <clears throat> before you're going to take it in and get it smogged, uh, you want to make sure that you have at least, you know, two to 300 miles on the car without any uh, engine Check engine lights or error codes. Uh, you do not want to replace the battery uh, or pull the terminals off your battery because that could potentially, uh, that'll reset, you know, all of your readiness monitors if you do that. So if, you, if you're about to get your car smogged and you need to, like, change the battery, you should do a hot swap on your battery. And you can watch some YouTube videos on how to, with jumper cables, how to hot swap a battery. Uh, so that you don't clear your readiness monitors because it takes quite a bit of time to get those ready readiness monitors back up and running again. Um, so here we have the Autel, A-U-T-E-L, M-K-808-S, as in Sam. Uh, link to buy this in the description. You can buy this on Amazon. Um, this is an ODB2 a bi-directional scanner device. It's professional grade. Like basically what I mean by that is it offers all of the same features and functions that a professional scanner that costs two or three or 5,000 or even, you know, potentially $15,000. It's going to offer almost all of those capabilities. Um, this is on Amazon for about 470 to $480. And <clears throat> I want to show you uh, what you need to do to make sure that when you go to smog your car and you show up, you're not going to run into this particular type of situation. So um, you'll go under service and then actually, sorry, it's not service. My apologies. Uh, diagnostics. And you're going to click right here on the E uh, OBD, this one right here. And click auto scan. So the vehicle actually, it's going to fail on this auto scan. And the reason why is because I have it in accessory mode right now, ACC. Um, you have to put it into run mode, okay? That doesn't mean you have to start the engine, but it has to be in run mode because it has to initialize the ECU, okay? Um, the engine control unit right now is not initialized. So this is actually, this is actually going to fail more than likely, but we'll see. Um, I'll go ahead and back out of that. We'll go into diagnostics again. Well, we'll just have to wait for it to fail. So I'm going to pause the video while we're waiting for this. Okay. This page comes up. Okay. Now we have this. So you can look at live data here. You can look at everything that's going on while the engine's running, like O2 sensors, voltages, like all the systems, everything. Okay. Right. But uh, more importantly here, um, we're going to go into IM. Okay. So IM readiness. Okay. And there's two, there's two options here. Since DTCs last cleared, and this driving cycle, right? So what we want to do is we want to look at since DTCs cleared. So that's from the last time that DTCs were cleared. And again, if you're going to go take your vehicle to get smogged, do not clear your DTCs. Do not take your car to a mechanic. And, and mechanics might clear the DTCs. And if you're like a week or two or a month away from getting smogged and everything's been cleared, it's going to take a long time for those IM readiness monitors to come back online. Uh, at least that's the case with my Dodge Challenger Hellcat. Um, I probably had to put, I had to do like three or four drive cycles and put like about 300 miles on the car 
uh, to get all, all my monitors into the ready state. Uh, it is winter time right now, so the temperature outside is very cold. But here you can see everywhere it says OK, that means ready, OK? NA means not applicable on this vehicle. Then you have INC, that means incomplete. And so you can see my EVAP system is still in the incomplete state, even though since I replaced my battery, I have about 400 miles on the car, a little bit over 400 since I replaced the battery, but this is still in the incomplete state. Um, <clears throat> a big part of that, I think, is the, is the temperature outside. So I don't have like positive pressure with fuel evaporating, etc., cetera, uh, in the fuel tank. And so the EVAP system is not really needing to kick on. In fact, you know, in the winter time when you have a gas can sitting out in your shed or in your garage, you'll notice that the gas can actually starts to go concave. It starts to kind of collapse in on itself. Um, in the summertime, those gas cans will actually explode. They'll start to pressurize and like poof out. Um, and so the EVAP system will basically uh, help to alleviate uh, evaporated gasoline vapors and pressures in your gas tank and put them through a charcoal filter system. But I think in the winter time, th this one is just not it's not initializing right but you can see everything else is in the quote okay status right um except for anything that's like not applicable to the vehicle right so <clears throat> um so that's good news why is that good news because you are allowed to have when you go and you get your test um you can pass the test with having one system uh that's not ready if you have more than one in the not ready uh, state, they will not pass you. Um, it is the most common for the EVAP to uh, not be ready, okay? Which is the reason I think the law is written in this way, and this was the way in California as well as in Texas. Um, this one, you know, more or less is that one sensor that they're saying, well, it's okay if, if one is not ready, and it's really this one. Um, because that's the one that's usually not ready when everything else is. So if you click escape here, you can come back and you can see here we have this drive cycle. So as I'm driving down the road, I can actually pull this up on my screen and I can see for this particular drive cycle what's ready and what's not ready. Um, you know, and it'll say here that the oxygen sensor right here is incomplete, etc. That's for this drive cycle, but um, as long as you have since uh, DTC is last cleared, that's what you really want to look at again because that's what they look at when they're pulling uh, these values right here to tell you if you've passed or not. <clears throat> so after completing multiple drive cycles today and going about 300 miles, I actually, um, I actually got passed and everything was good except again, except EVAP, right? So if you can't get them all to come on, don't worry. Uh, there are reasons for that, um, and they'll allow you to pass. So I uh, hope this video uh, was informative uh, for you, and uh, good luck in smogging your car moving forward.